Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Making the best out of wherever you are, doing whatever you're doing. Yesterday, I read uh, Your Own Best Secret Place by Bird Baylor, of course. And today, I'm going to read uh, The Desert Is Theirs by Bird Baylor, of course. Illustrated by Peter Parnall. This one won the Caldecott Honor Book. Uh, that's not the top prize, but it's pretty good. Have you ever won the Caldecott Honor? Um, it's another beautiful illustration. Thank you, Peter Parnell. And this this book um, was given to Brandon on his third birthday with love from Grandma Smith. She said, I just returned from a trip to Arizona to visit Uncle Don, Kay, Katie, and Douglas. I saw a lot of desert and the flowers that grow there, 1992. So Brandon or Kay or Katie or Douglas or Don, if you if you want this book back, I don't know. It just came to me from the internet. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to give it back as long as I have it. I might give it to someone else. So this is from 1975. To Baylor Stanley, one of the desert people. I don't know who that is. Maybe it's related to Bird Baylor. Maybe she, he was named for her or she was named for him. I think that's what it was. So, this is no place for anyone who wants soft hills and meadows and everything green, green, green. This is for hawks that like only the loneliest canyons and lizards that run in the hottest sand and coyotes that choose the rockiest trails. It's for them and for the birds that nest in cactus and sing out over a thousand thorns because they're where they want to be. It's for them. And for hard, skinny plants that do without water for months at a time. Look at those needles. And it's for strong brown desert people who call the earth their mother. They have to see mountains and they have to see deserts every day or they don't feel right. They wouldn't leave even for rivers or flowers or bending grass. They'd miss the sand too much. They'd miss the sun. So it's for them. Talk to Papago Indians. They're desert people. They know desert secrets that no one else knows. Ask how they live in a place so harsh and dry. They'll say they like the land they live on, so they treat it well, the way you'd treat an old friend. They sing its songs. They never heard it. And the land knows. Ask why they chose a place to, where life would be so hard. They'll say that once, at the beginning of time, Earthmaker patted out a dab of dirt in his hands and a greasewood bush grew there. Greasewood, so you know, it was desert. You know it needed desert people. Even then, Kaya was around giving advice and scattering seeds on the side of hills. Where he dropped those seeds, you see Saguru cactus growing now. There's a whole mountain, and if you hear a background noise of a man having a telephone call, it's because he decided to sit down 10 feet from me and have a telephone call. Um, so sorry for that. Spider people were there too. When the whole world wobbled, they sewed earth and sky together. It's together still. Buzzard, where mountains with his wings and gopher burrowed a path to lead people out of the underworld and up, up, up into the fierce white sunlight. Elder brother taught people how to live under the sun. He gave them the ceremonies they would need for bringing rain. He even taught them what songs to sing to touch the power of the earth. Their mother. I don't have selfie cams turned on so I don't exactly see what I'm showing you but hopefully you get the picture also this book is still in print so you could buy it or get it from the library hopefully if the libraries are open or ask your librarian and he taught them to share the land with animals and birds remember animals were here first so they know better than people how to live 
Their wisdom is older. They're more at ease in a desert place, the Indians say. You can tell it's true. Look how badger burrows into the cool, dark earth while man has to walk in the heat of the sun. Look how hawk floats on the wind while man plods slowly over the rocks. Would you like to fly? When I lived in Japan, I heard that most Japanese men, when they ask what animal you want to come back as, they say a bird. Maybe like bird baler. Papago try not to anger their animal brothers. They don't snap on a snake's tracks in the sand. They don't disturb a fox's bones. They don't shove a horned toad out of the path. They know the land belongs to the spider and ant, the same it does to people. They never say, this is my land, to do with it as I please. They say, we share, we only share. And they do share. A deer likes the same sweet seeds and wild berries that Indian children hunt. You'll see doves dipping down for the juicy red fruit that grows high on a cactus. And you'll see Indian children hold out their hands for the same summer treat. You'll see pack rats hiding their treasure. They're good mesquite beans, but they can't have them all. People are storing them too. Pack rats and people both know to save some for tomorrow or later. The desert gives what it can to each of its children. Women weave grass into their baskets and birds weave it into their nests. Men dig in the earth for soil to make houses, little square adobe houses, the color of hills. And lizards dig burrows in the same safe earth. Here, animals and people know what plants to eat when they are sick. They know what roots and weeds can make them well again. No one has to tell coyote or deer, and no one has to tell the papagos. They share in other ways, too. They share the feeling of being brothers in the desert, of being desert creatures together. A year that is hard for people is hard for scorpions, too. It's hard for everything. Rain is a blessing counted drop by drop. Each plant finds its own way to hold that sudden water. They don't waste it on floppy green leaves. They have thorns and stickers and points instead. Yucca sends roots searching far, far underground, farther than you'd ever dream a root would go. And saguaro is fat after rain, fat with the water it's saving inside its great stem. Give it one summer storm, it can last a year if it has to. And sometimes it has to. Look at those thorns. I still can't believe that on this whole mountain, a guy chose to sit down 10, 10 feet from where I'm making a video and I told him I was making a video. I think he's talking about real estate. The desert's children learn to be patient. Hidden in his burrow, kangaroo rat spends each long day waiting for the heat to fade, waiting for darkness to cool the desert where he runs. Just so he runs sometime. A weed may wait three years to bloom, just so it blooms sometime. A toad may wait for months to leave his sandy hiding place and sing toad songs after a rain, just so he sings sometime. Desert people are patient too. You don't see them rushing. You don't hear them shouting. They say you plant happier corn if you take your time and that squash tastes best if you've sung it slow songs while it's growing. And they do. Anyway, the desert has its own kind of time that doesn't need clocks. That's the kind of time snakes go by and rains go by and rocks go by and desert people go by too. That's why every desert thing knows when the time comes to celebrate. There's another bird book. I'm in charge of celebrations. I haven't read yet. We're almost done. Suddenly, 
all together it happens. Cactus blooms yellow and pink and purple. The papagos begin their ceremonies to pull down rain. Every plant joins in. Even the dry earth makes a sound of joy when the rain touches. Hawks call across the canyons. Children laugh for nothing. Coyotes dance in the moonlight. Where else would the desert people want to be? Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, if you've got any desert stories of your own, let me know. Uh, I hope this book inspires you to walk a little lightly and uh, to um, just be nice to everybody and everything. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.